Time for stock taking. Are you ready for heaven? Are you God fearing? Heaven is a holy abode for the holy and righteous ones of God. Is your life being checked by the word of God? What will heaven be like? Matthew 20 verses 20 and 21. As Jesus was speaking about the things that were to come, Zebedee's wife, whose sons were among Jesus' disciples, came to Jesus with her sons and knelt down before him to ask a favor. Jesus, what do you want? Zebedee's wife, when the kingdom of God is made manifest, I want one of my boys, James and John, to sit at your right hand, and one to sit at your left hand. What an extraordinary request from the mother of these two disciples, James and John. Since Christ had called them to ministry, she had followed and listened to the teachings of Jesus. Since Christ had called them to ministry, she had followed and witnessed the miracles of Jesus. And she had come to a place that of all the disciples and her people, her boys deserved VIP seats in heaven. In today's colloquial, they deserved ringside seats alongside the great heroes of faith like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let us get back to the context of our narration, and before scripture helps us to understand and see the caliber and contenders for entry into God's heaven. Matthew 20 verses 20 to 25. As Jesus was speaking about the things that were to come, Zebedee's wife, whose sons were among Jesus' disciples, came to ask Jesus with her sons and knelt down before him to ask a favor. Jesus, what do you want? Zebedee's wife, when the kingdom of God is made manifest, I want one of my boys, James and John, to sit at your right hand, and one to sit at your left hand. Jesus to all three. You don't understand what you are asking. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? Can you be ritually washed in baptism just as I have been baptized? The Zebedee brothers, of course. Jesus, yes, you will drink from my cup. And yes, you will be baptized as I have been. But the thrones to my right and my left are not mine to grant. My Father has already given those seats to those for whom they were created. The other ten disciples learned what the Zebedee brothers had asked of Jesus, and they were upset. So Jesus called the disciples together. Apparently, the wife of Zebedee secretly thinks her sons have worshipped harder and sacrificed more for Jesus than the other disciples. And she probably suspects that Jesus loves them best. She thinks he will at least do the right thing and reward their hardest work and most loyal service. She also hopes that if her sons are there on the nearest, closest thrones, she may spend eternity near and close, too, clutching on to their coattails. Let the scriptures help us to understand and see the caliber and contenders for entry into God's heaven. The book of John 14 helps us to understand the design of heaven and its qualified occupants. 
that is you and me. John 14 verse 1 to 6 Don't worry or surrender to your fear, for you have believed in God. Now trust and believe in me also. My Father's house has many dwelling places. If it were otherwise, I would tell you plainly, because I go to prepare a place for you. And when everything is ready, I will come back and take you to myself, so that you will be where I am. And you already know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Master, we don't know where you are going, so how could we know the way there? Jesus explained, I am the way. I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes next to the Father except through union with me. To know me is to know my Father too. We see that heaven is a future dwelling home of the saints according to the teachings of Jesus. My Father's house has many dwelling places. If it were otherwise, I would tell you plainly, because I go to prepare a place for you. The place called heaven is just as real as the place you call home. It's a real place filled with real people, which is why Jesus sometimes exemplifies heaven to a mansion with many rooms. Hence, everyone, believer or non-believer, wants to know about heaven and everyone wants to go there. The book of Revelation paints a picture of what heaven is and will become in the following way. Revelation 21 verse 1 to 5 Then, in a vision, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and earth had passed away, and the sea no longer existed. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of the heavenly realm from the presence of God like a pleasing bride that has been prepared for her husband, adorned for her wedding. And I heard a thunderous voice from the throne, saying, Look, God's tabernacle is with human beings, and from now on he will tabernacle with them as their God. Now God himself will have his home with them. God with them will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and eliminate death entirely. No one will mourn or weep any longer. The pain of wounds will no longer exist, for the old order has ceased. And God enthroned spoke to me and said, Consider this, I am making everything to be new and fresh. Write down at once all that I have told you, because each word is trustworthy and dependable. The book of Philippians paints a picture of what heaven is, and it will become in the following way. Philippians 3 verses 20 and 21 But we are citizens of heaven, exiles on earth, waiting eagerly for a liberator, our Lord Jesus the Anointed, to come and transform these humble, earthly bodies into the form of His glorious body by the same power that brings all things under His control. Psalm 33 verses 13 to 15 The Lord looks over us where He rules in heaven, gazing into every heart from His lofty dwelling place. He observes all the peoples of the earth. The creator of our hearts considers 
and examines everything we do. Let the scriptures continue to paint and shape heaven in us and its location. Acts 1 verse 11 They said, Why are you men from Galilee standing here and looking up into the sky? Jesus has been taken to heaven, but he will come back in the same way that you have seen him go. Heaven is a city designed and built by God. Hebrews 11 verse 10 Abraham did this because he was waiting for the eternal city that God had planned and built. Heaven is a better country. Every one of those people died, but they still had faith even though they had not received what they had been promised. They were glad just to see these things from far away, and they agreed that they were only strangers and foreigners on this earth. When people talk this way, it is clear that they are looking for a place to call their own. If they had been talking about the land where they had once lived, they could have gone back at any time. But they were looking forward to a better home in heaven. That's why God wasn't ashamed for them to call him their God. He even built a city for them. Time for, time for stock taking. Are you ready for heaven? Are you God-fearing? Heaven is a holy abode for the holy and righteous ones of God. Is your life being checked by the word of God?